I'm Fred and I'm going to be your instructor during this uh, uh, series of painting lessons. But before we get into the lesson itself, I would like to introduce you to our neat paints that we'll be using. They are acrylic and they are pre-mixed uh, color-wise, so uh, this will help you in learning how to handle the paints itself. I have two of our paints out here. This is called uh, Midnight and this one is uh, Warm Snow. So what I want to do, uh, partially with this anyway, is to show you how to load your brush and how to mix the paint. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the Midnight over here and approximately the same amount of the Warm Snow. Mix the two to together and see you. I just put them in a in a pile and then what we're going to best way to do this is just go through it with your knife like this and like this and you used to do this a couple times and, and it mixes quite quite quickly and well. Uh, the main thing is don't go in and, and stir it like that. That doesn't, doesn't help anything other than take up your time. So and uh, you don't have to go slow. You can move right along and get that get that done. But see how how easily those have mixed together. And I might also show you that we do have a um, background brush here that is well used. But I'm going to squeeze a little of the water out to show you that uh, you, you sometimes uh, need to do that to get the water out of there. Uh, we have about an inch, two inches to two inches of water in here. And all we need to do is keep the, the uh, brush bristle in, in the water uh, all the time that you're painting. Uh, so now there is a little bit of that water left in the brush. And so I'm adding this to the paint, which is going to make this just about right to uh, use. See, it's just like house paint that you would get out of the a bucket of paint if you're going to paint your house. That's about the about the way it would be. Now if we go over here and paint this in just like that. See how easy that goes on there and covers. Uh, and uh, that uh, alone is, will help you uh, when, when you're applying paint with the background brush. Uh, also I might show you the fan brush and uh, usually you this is this is the way we will use the fan brush we use probably will will not thin that uh, any I will just use it as as it is uh, and uh, then uh, but you notice that I did fill that brush up with a lot of paint. It's it's hard to uh, get across to to people sometimes when they think that they're wasting paint. But in the long run, all they're doing is wasting time by not filling that up. They just go ahead. Now I'm, I'm going to do, just put something over here, maybe like a evergreen tree, and it's going to be upside down to you. But see, you do need to to load that that up with paint. Now let's let's just do this like like they're going to put on a tree on there. See and there's there's our tree. Well that's we'll be we'll be doing some trees a little later on but that gives you an idea of how easily that is done just by loading up your brush and, and putting it uh, putting it on. You can do more than more than one but we'll get into that a little later. Put some some brush back here, whatever, and, and uh, see, you could just practically paint a painting with, uh, with that. So, let me also show you how to load a knife, because in our painting we will be using a knife to paint with, and what I want to do is show you how to pick this up on the... I, I have never figured out which is the top and which is the bottom of the knife, but this side of the knife anyway is what we what we use to load that up with, not 
not this part here as you can see um, so use use this side and then you can have um, easy access to putting that paint on there any any way you need to do it so uh, that will help you I think later on when we start working with a knife okay I think that's about all we, we want to uh, talk about right now and as we go through the lesson why we will exaggerate different uh, things but I think we'll just go ahead and start our painting now all right here we go I have two paints out here this is western sky and warm snow we're going to grade a sky. In other words, we'll start at the top of the painting and uh, paint down maybe halfway. But as we come down, we keep adding the lighter colors to uh, uh, make it more like a horizon. In other words, the sky is lighter at the horizon. So that's one way you get depth into a painting. So we'll start out just by loading the brush up with western sky now I have there's a little bit of water left in the brush so that's nice and nice and smooth but we want about the consistency of house paint okay let's try this let's start right at the top and paint this in solid now, I'm just using western sky now that's running a little bit that doesn't hurt anything will be painting over the top of that shortly anyway so that won't make any difference so we have this and come down about four inches something like that and then we go right back to our palette now I will just use the brush as is now, I didn't uh, wash out any of the paint or anything we'll just leave the paint that's in the brush let it stay in there but I'll go in and load up our brush with warm snow and then go back and we'll start about another four inches down here maybe maybe a little bit more and paint this in solid but see there's just a little bit of hint of blue to that now as we go up this way that will give us a and I, we're getting some runs on there, but we still have one more time around. I got that just a little bit wet, and uh, that, but that should uh, show you how we can do. Let's go back to our palette. Now we'll again load up. We we'll just pick up the rest of the the warm snow, and go up to our. Now we'll start with our new paint down here and see we're about halfway down our panel and we go back the same way we did before we just go right back work that up into our previously painted area but we do not come back down you notice I've just started down here and work up but do not come back down but if you do you pick up the paint up here and bring it down into here and we'll not have any gradation going back that way at all so uh, and you notice that there were some runs and stuff on there well don't don't worry about that uh, maybe it was good that it did that so that you'll know that uh, you don't have to be that careful if especially if you're going to be painting over the top of that why it'll it uh, won't hurt a thing so okay now we have uh, we have half of our panel painted on now so you go ahead and paint that in as I have uh, runs or not and then we'll uh, uh, come back and start putting our mountain over in over in this area right in there
I have put out uh, two new paints. This is Rocky Mountain and this one is Fog. I'm going to put the two together and this will be, remember how we, the beginning we mixed the paint? We'll do the same thing this way, although this wouldn't have to be mixed uh, as thoroughly as maybe uh, some of the others. Um, because this is going to be the paint for our mountain. We're going to put this on with a knife. So I'll just pick up this up on the bottom of the knife and go up to this area right in here. Now, we don't want to put this mountain right in the center. That would not be very uh, good composition. So we want to move it over to the right of center and not go up there really very high either. So I'm just going to move over. I'm going to put a point right there. That's, that's where, where the top of the mountain is going to be. And again, we'll use the knife to put this on. So I'll start. And we don't want to put a real high peak on there. I, I think keep it low profile and, and you, you appreciate your mountain more if you, if you do that. See, we'll just put it up to that point come down here and lay that across there. See, that's the beginning of the base for our mountain. Gather up some more paint, and all we have to do is drag this down. And you'll notice I don't really spend a lot of time doing that. Just all you have to do is drag the paint down about that far. And that's all you have to do. Even you'd see those little places out there that won't hurt it, hurt hurt anything. We'll be putting some uh, snow over the top of that, uh, which or uh, warm snow and uh, cool snow over in that area. So that won't hurt anything. In fact, let's let's do this. We have this little little mountain like that. Let's do that. There, see that. This is our mountain. We can do anything we want to with it. Okay, see, now that didn't take very long. But don't put, you know, a lot of paint on this because when we need to let that dry pretty good before we start putting our snow colors on there. So let that stay uh, without a lot of paint on there. Don't have it too thick. Be sure and drag that that paint down and even if it doesn't places like that if it doesn't co cover don't worry about it that that's good that's part of the part of the way you uh, you paint you let some of the panel or canvas come through all right you you put uh, that on with the knife as i have then we'll come back and start putting our uh, snow on the on the mountain
we're going to put some snow on the mountain <clears throat> and this will be snow that will be out in the, the uh, sunlight so this is what we're going to use is warm snow and we're not going to put anything with it and on this on this painting anyway just to keep it simple let's start right in in here with putting this snow on there the light will be coming from the left or the available light which is the sun will be coming from the left so we will have shadows on the right side of um, the mountain more or less in different areas there anyway so let's just kind of lay that right on there like that now <clears throat> you can see that's on there quite thick but uh, we we want to we want to kind of kind of leave it that way we want to scrape that off so so I'm just laying a bead of paint right down here like this because that part will be in the sunlight anyway now there will be times when there will, will not be any any paint on here and this will be areas where the rocks are so steep that uh, it will not retain the snow that's on there so we want to kind of go with that I might come over here just a little farther put this on here load up again now let's come down come down this way just a little bit about like this then I'm going to cut back and go over this way like that lightly bring this down here now I didn't press hard or anything just let some of that come through there now you can see that mountain is changing already as we just did put that much on there Okay, I'm going to go over here now in this area Put some Warm snow here Now you can see what's what is happening we're getting a depression going back in the mountain and that's why why we wanted to do that and we will we will work on that and that's where some of the cool snow will go the shadowed snow will go in there okay now come down here just a little bit farther and this it doesn't make this much difference because we're going to have some um, something in front of this part in here anyway so we don't have to be too careful here and I think I'll just leave right upon the very tip top here I want to put a little bit snow there And here, and this this will be okay. And this area in here will be in a in a shadow. So we'll have this and this, and plus a few other areas that will be in some shadowed snow. But uh, you go ahead and put in the warm snow that we have on there, and then we'll come back and start our shadowed snow.
Now we're going to put a little bit of cool snow on the shadowed areas thusly right in here now we're going to put our shadow snow and I think it looks kind of neat just just to kind of drag some of this down here and I like the old snow really does crevices on that on that mountain need a little bit of this right up here Uh, maybe right along there, about like that. Shadows. And then also right in this area, we'll drag this down about like that. And right, right in this area, let's let's put this in kind of heavy, like we have a little glacier lingering in the, right in there like that. Okay, I guess that's that's looking pretty good now. Let's let's uh, see where else we might have some shadowing. Some come right down here probably, and uh, some right in here. A little shadowing, uh, and uh, a few little places maybe here. here and maybe just a couple couple little uh, places let's see let's bring this over here just a little bit farther drop that down there a little heavier there okay I think that looks uh, that looks pretty good and you can keep painting and pretty soon you have your everything all painted over and so kind of be careful with that I think what I'm going to do right in this area, I'm going to put a little bit of warm snow because I think that would be a little warm snow right on top there, like that. There. Now you go ahead and, and paint that, and and uh, then I'll we'll come back and we're going to start working forward from from here on. The the mountain will be the most distant part of this, so you go ahead and paint that in then we'll start uh, working with the uh, I'm going to put a row of um, pine trees a uh, hill covered pine trees right down through that area that's what we'll do next
I have put out some new ta new paint, and this is distant pine. I'm going to use the background brush, and I'm going to thin this pretty good. Well, quite thin, and it, that'll give us a a good effect when we're putting this. We're just going to make a a hill covered with pine trees off in the distance. See how I'm mixing that and how wet that really is. And if it's wet, quite wet, then it'll work pretty good, hopefully. So let's try it. Let's go right over on the left side here, right in this area, and um, put, put this in. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to push that right in there and lift up on it. And when you do, the, the, the um, brush bristles will make the tops of some pine trees or trees and if if this is still wet in here on your painting try and stay below it if you can uh, come um, and, and, I'll, and and mine's a little wet right in there so i'll try and, and see what i can do but first off here's what here's what we're going to do keep your keep your brush perpendicular to your to your panel And this isn't working too good. Okay, I think that's better. And this so just keep little little strokes going up just like that. And we'll come right down here in this area. Then we'll do the go right underneath this and do the same thing. Keep that right perpendicular to the panel. And that will be a hill pretty much covered with with pine trees. And I think that's probably okay. I hope you did do a better job than I did. I didn't do very good. But you get the idea anyway. Okay, you paint paint that in, then we're going to come over on this side and work on the, on this a little bit then we're going to put in a meadow
I have now put out some new paint, a uh, new color to the program, and this is called Dark Forest. I'm going to use some Dark Forest into the remaining distant pine, and we'll try and make it about half and half, something like that. And this will, in turn, uh, bring our trees that we're going to put in, it will bring them up closer to us. They won't be the distant pine, they'll be semi-distant, I guess. But I think if you use equal parts of distant pine and dark forest, you'll come out in pretty good shape. And we're going to put this in with the fan brush. And so I'll use, uh, use this. Gather this up like so. See how I'm loading that brush up? And that's what, and that's what we do. Then, right in this area, I'm going to start about here and just draw a line right underneath that, like that. And then, I'm going to load this in with paint. We'll be using this paint uh, To uh, maybe like that, just a little straighter there. I'll uh, not only have a load of on my brush, but also we have the paint on there that we'll utilize as we do this. I turn my brush in this this manner, like this, and we'll bring some trees up here. They'll be much closer to us. See, we're using the paint underneath there that I put out there, plus the paint that's in the brush, and we're putting that on like, like so. And that pretty much uh, uh, gets, gets us uh, in closer. You can see how much closer that looks than the trees back here. So you go ahead and put them in, then we're gonna come back and put our meadow on here.
And this <coughs> is the way that we are going to paint in our meadow. I have some more dark forest and I also have some light meadow. And first I'm going to use the dark forest with the background brush and thinned. I had some little water with that and it's going to be about right. Now I want you to pay close attention when I put this on and we have to move right along before this dries because that is going to go right over the top of this when we get there. All right, here we go. Now you'll notice I have my brush like this, not like this. I'm going to cross like we're going to paint that in. That way we're going to keep, keep this in just like that. We'll make just a straight line right across there. Try and keep it straight anyway right up to the trees. Okay, now load up again and I still keep the brush in the same position and we'll go right over here, go right under those trees there like that. See how that's doing? Uh, I know that some of you are going to want to hold the brush this way, but please just just do it like this and you'll find out it'll work much better than if we had done it the other way. Now you notice I'm going the full length of that on one application of paint. I'll load up after each, each uh, time across but see we're getting little furrows in there and that's that's one that's what we're trying to do and when I put the other paint on there it, it, will, it will be more so but that helps lend distance to our meadow otherwise you really don't have too much way to do it uh, unless you're using a lot of detail in the foreground which we do not on a beginning painting. We don't do too much detail. In fact, very little detail. There we are. We're just about there. Okay, now we have that painted in with the uh, dark forest. Now I'm going to clean out my brush and uh, drain, drain the water out of that and we'll pick up the light forest uh, without adding any water to it. We want this without any water and load the brush up and then we'll come up here and go right over the top of that. Just follow those lines and hold the brush the same way we did with the first application of the dark forest. See that metal coming on there? Okay. And we still hold the brush in this position. And that really helps lend some depth. to the middle. And don't go over it twice. 
just one time is all you need to do. Otherwise, it, you paint out the, all the goodies. Okay, now we'll leave it just like that. But you can see the the furrows going back, and that helps uh, bring the distance into our meadow. So you go ahead, paint that in using the dark forest, uh, quite wet, and then the light meadow, and do not thin it. And use the brush in the same position for both applications.
Now, we have some more dark forest and a fan brush. And so I'm going to load up the fan brush with the dark forest. And then we're going to go up and put in some individual trees right in this area. They'll be up quite close to us. And we'll go with probably three trees. So I'm going to start one about there. There's the top of the tree. Now, we are going to use the corner of the brush on our tree to start with. And see how I'm doing that? Try to keep my hand out of the way so you can see. Now I'm letting the end of the brush actually do the, put those uh, branches on there. I'm gonna leave a little distance between the between the branches. You work from the center out. Center out, center out. Okay, center out. Make sure that it's completely covered in the center because that's the most foliage part of the tree. We'll come down a little bit to closer here and see how we have to load that up every once in a while when we start running low on on the paint and the brush. I think that's probably about as far down as we're going to go with this one. Okay, now we have one tree. So it looks a little bit crooked, but I think probably the wind blows up there, and that's why why that is. So let's try let's try another one a little closer to us yet, and and uh, this is going to be a little taller. It's going to be a predominant tree. We'll go clear above the skyline, or it's clear above uh, the mountain there, and. Um, Put this in this way. Uh, I'm going to go quite slow here till uh, for just a little ways. Then we're going to have to speed it up. This is one place you could really make up time is putting in this type of tree. See, we're going coming over in front of the the first tree that we put in there. I think the wind's still blowing. Seems to be getting more crooked yet. Oh, okay. Now, let's do one more. Let's put it about right here. Make this a about there. This is the mama tree, papa tree, and baby tree. But when you're putting in objects into a painting, it's best to go with odd numbers rather than even. Okay, now we'll kind of set that in back a little bit. So, so there we have our, our the base for our three trees. And uh, a little later on, uh, or the next part of this, we'll, we'll come back and put some light on, on the trees over here and, and on, on these trees. And so uh, you go ahead, paint those in as I have, and then uh, then we'll come back and work on those. Now remember, let the let the end of the brush do the work for you. Uh, don't and don't be afraid, and and mostly don't turn your brush down and hang the branches down. A good live tree is does not have the branches hanging down. They they go up on the ends. So when when you're putting the, your trees in, remember that's, uh, that's the way we do it. Okay, so you're on your own now.
Now, we are going to put some sunshine on our mid-ground trees on the right side of our painting. And the way we do this, we load up a number four round brush and come over here and kind of clean it out. I don't want too much paint in it just and have it very dry don't don't wet it or anything just have it as dry as you can when you when you put it in the paint and that's probably about as much as I should try let's let's try that anyway now we'll, we'll work on 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 these trees right here now what we do we use the side of the brush and, and a very, very, very light touch. Uh, and, um, and all we want to do is just warm these trees in here. Uh, and there'll be a lighter, uh, lighter green that will come through here. And okay, now I don't know if you can see that or not, but see those little areas uh, out there that we're picking up some some light tones there. Those branches just kind of come out and hit us when, when we do it this way. Light touch. See how I'm holding my my brush with, with, with three fingers and a, a thumb and uh, then parallel of the, br the brush handle is parallel with the uh, on the surface of the canvas. Okay, see them coming out there? A the little hummer just come right out there and that looks great. And then I'm turning my brush as, as I do this so that we have a, a, an unused area or part of the brush as we come along here. And you can probably do this on one application of paint. Okay, I'm going to leave that about, about like that. Get a little more right at the tops here. That's where the most sun is, it's right up at the top there. Okay, you do that and then we'll come back and finish this up.
Now we're going to just finish this up by putting some light forest on our individual trees and then we'll put in a, some shadowing underneath the trees. So load, load up your fan brush like this then. Now we're going to start on these trees. We'll start on the one on the right. And uh, to start with, all we do is just kind of duplicate what we did with the uh, light or with the dark forest. And um, we come and go right over the top of that. But what we need to know now is that this tree is in front of it, and this is the dark side over here, the shadowed side. So we we don't put too much more paint on on that uh, on that tree. Maybe just a little bit more right in right in there, and th then this goes in the sh on the shadow side. So let's come up here and do the same thing with this one. We want to remember. The left side is the the sunniest side of the tree. Now there are other other colors that will go on this type of a tree, but I'm not going to to bring that out in this lesson. We just want to keep this as simple as we can. And if we start getting too many colors in there, it becomes a little confusing. But it would really improve the, the uh, tree. Now, pick up a little more right here. We'll put this one on here. Okay, I think it's probably now. While while I have this uh, this light force, I'm going to try putting some shadow on with this. I don't know if it's going to be dark enough or not, but I think when it dries, it will be about uh, about right. So see what I'm doing? I'm running the shadow out here. For, for these trees in here. And keep the a low, uh, keep that right, right on the ground and not very wide because you're looking at this at a different angle than, uh, than if you're looking at the trees. You're looking broadside at the trees, but down here the trees are laying, laying down and uh, the surface is going, or the tree or the shadow is going this way so uh, keep that in mind when you so don't you don't get it too too uh, large of a shadow I think I can come out here just a little bit farther about like that now I think that probably that shadow is going I'll tell you what I'm going to add just a little bit of dark force to that I it still isn't quite deep enough but when that dries, this is one thing that you want to remember, that uh, acrylics dry darker. So chances are this will become darker. So let's, let's leave that about like that. And that's really all we're going to do with this painting this time. As, as we go on, we will start more detail and uh, more completion for our painting, but for now, this is about as much as, as we want to do. It's hard to quit playing with this sometimes. Okay, you're on your own from here on. So uh, finish it up and then we'll do another one at another time.